Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider in a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Basic Cherry 3008. And before we do get into this story, I just want to give you a couple of warnings. There is mentions of mental and physical abuse and also talk of suicide within the story as well. So if you do want to skip it, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. And the story is titled, I, male 18, just found out that my father, male 42, baby trapped my mother, female 40, with me. I grew up thinking my mother had abandoned us. That is what he always told me. He told me my mother packed up and left us when I turned two years old. I grew up to resent and hate her, mainly because I saw how my father was working super long hours to make ends meet. I hated how my grandma basically had to raise me. When I would ask her about my mother, my grandma painted a picture of a bitter, spiteful, hateful, spoiled slash entitled woman. I felt very justified in my anger and hate for her. That's why my family told me and I had absolutely no reason to doubt them. A few weeks ago, I found her on social media while at my boyfriend's house. I was so fucking mad. She was out there living her best life. She is a cook or chef in a Michelin star restaurant. She travels, has a huge apartment and apparently is married to a gorgeous man. In a fit of rage, I DM'd her, cursing her out for abandoning me to live her frivolous life and that karma would come to her. She obviously saw it. Instead of going off on me, she just asked me to meet her and she felt like I had a right to express my anger to her in person and she owed me as much. I was starstruck because my father said she never stood for the consequences of her actions. Without telling anyone, I agreed. She invited me to this amazing restaurant. She paid an Uber for me and everything. It was very awkward at the beginning. I kept berating her. I was so angry. I cried a little. She just sat there and took it all in. I then asked her, why she abandoned me. She then asked, this is all paraphrased, do you really want to know the whole story? It is not nice and you will not like it. I'm ready to be the bad guy in your head forever and keep my distance. I just kept pressing her and then she told me the real story. This is again paraphrased into my best recollection. She told me that my father and she met shortly before ending uni. At that time, my mother had said she did not want to stay in uni town. A few months after dating, my father told her that his landlord was evicting him because the apartment was needed for immediate family use. She offered him to stay while he found something else. Months passed and he was not doing anything. Then she got a job offer in another country. She told my father that he could take over her apartment or come with her. They had this huge fight where my mother told him she was not ready for the type of commitment he wanted. She wanted different things in life than him and, and that as much as she loved him, they weren't compatible. They stayed living together and then one day she found out she was pregnant. She told me honestly that she was thinking of not having me. She did not feel ready to be a mom at 22. She did not feel maternal feelings. She said she was already struggling with depression and late diagnosed ADHD. My father convinced her to have me. He said he would take me because he had a right to me, that he would go after her because that baby was also his. So she had me. She said that the time after the birth was really bad. My father was dragging out the legal procedures. He refused to vacate the home. My mother said that while she felt love for me and that there were moments where she felt overjoyed, it was overshadowed by huge waves of suicidal ideation. She was scared that she was going to hurt me. She also showed me some of the court documents of that time that backed up her claims. In the end, she was so desperate that she agreed to stay with my father if he agreed to be the main caretaker. He did, but only half asked. My mother then told me that it got so bad that she tried to commit suicide around my second birthday after a particularly nasty fight where my father admitted to having tampered with her birth control. She showed me the papers of the involuntary 72 hours commitment and the legal documents where she was found unfit to be a parent afterwards. I felt nauseous after all that would not have believed her hadn't she brought so much evidence with her. She then asked me what I meant in my messages that we were struggling. I told her that we were not exactly rich and that we were struggling to come up with the money to go to university in another city. She was bewildered and asked me what my father had been doing with the monthly payments she was making. I told her that we don't receive that money. Then she took out another stack of papers. 
Guys, she is sending child support every month. There's almost 3k every month. Edit. She's court mandated to pay me 1.5k. She doubled the payments out of her own will. She doesn't have to pay that amount. She wants to. She was very concerned about this and told me that she would talk to her lawyer's ASAP to transfer the money to me directly. In the end, she apologized to me. She is very sorry to have put me through this. She was very sorry for not being stronger. She was very sorry for letting me grow up the way I did. She was crying. I was crying. She then told me to take my time. She would contact me again regarding the payments and that it was up to me if I wanted to see her again. That she couldn't be the mother I wanted, but that the least she could do is help me with anything that I need. I hugged her. I cried and she cried. I boxed up my food and she got me another Uber home. At home, my father was not there, so I went straight to bed and left early the next morning. I'm staying with my boyfriend. My whole life is a lie. Some of the comments on this one says, this one's from Hold, who says, my father did something incredibly similar. To make it worse, she died before I found out the truth. I lost one parent and then cut the other out of my life when I found out the truth. I suggest you spend time getting to know your mum before you can't. Content Bowler says, your father must be a deadbeat or has some hidden addictions that he has hidden from you. 3k a month in child support, if spent entirely on you, would pay for any type of middle class perks and advantages. This would include private schools, tutoring, and extracurricular activities. TX Giant says, holy shit, your father is a manipulative, horrible man. I can't even imagine the level of pain from the revelation of all of this. I'm glad you're a fully legal 18-year-old and have a boyfriend that you can live with while you get everything together. Don't tell your father or anyone on his side of the family until you get all your stuff, anything you might need out of that house, and any legal money situation resolved. You never know what someone that dishonest and manipulative might do. I'm so sorry, and good luck, OP. Kafafal Bunny says, kiddo, I am so, so, so very sorry this is happening. Why your mother may not be able to be a mum to you? She does sound like someone who can be a very useful ally for you to have. You need therapy for an entire life's worth of trauma. If your mum is serious about the money, talk to her about finding a therapist for yourself so you can process this. You are so strong. I'm really proud of you and I'm glad to hear that you have such a supportive boyfriend in your corner. One more comment from Wise Caterpillar who says, I'm so sorry for you, but really, this is why I always get both sides to a story your father and his family lied to you for years. Not only lied, but in fact stole from you all the child support. 3000 a month is a lot of money over the years. If I was you, I would seriously go no contact with your father and everyone. Just cut them out, at least for a time period for you to come to terms with everything. Maybe while no contact with them, you can at least get to know your mother. And remember your mum wasn't able to be a mother to you. Not that she didn't want, but was unable to due to her mental health. She thought she did right by you with the child support. And you are now going to have to accept that your father isn't a good person because of the lies and, and that what he did to your mother because I'm wondering how much of her mental state was because of him. Opie added an update that was titled Just Found Records of Domestic Violence from My Father, 42 Male, to My Mother, 40 Female. My male 18 life keeps crumbling. I found out that my mother never really abandoned me because she didn't want me, but because she tried to commit suicide and was deemed unfit to parent and that my father basically baby trapped my mother with me. After the post yesterday, I went snooping even more because I do not trust my father anymore. I found records of domestic abuse perpetrated by my father towards my mother. He was charged but never ended up going to jail or did a very reduced sentence. This would have been when I was two after my mother was committed. I also found a restraining order filed by my mother against my father. It was so much worse than what she said. He did not only abuse her emotionally but also physically. I am feeling so disgusted. I could just scream. I returned to my boyfriend again. My father has been calling a lot asking why I spent so much time away from home. Right now my excuse is a family emergency with my boyfriend. After yesterday I want to confront him but now I don't feel safe. Any advice? OP updates again and says my life was put upside down for the past weeks. TLDR is that I found out my mother did not abandon me but tried to commit suicide and was deemed unfit parent due to her mental illnesses. She was given my father 3k a month as child support. 1.5k was court mandated, 1.5k was out of her own will. I also found court records of my father being charged with physically assaulting my mother on more than one occasion. After staying for a while with my boyfriend, I decided to go home for a while because I wanted to get my legal documents and all of that. 
my father came back home and we talked a bit. I just asked him, by the way, did my mother never send you child support for me? My father just scoffed theatrically and went on this rant about how courts are always accessible to the mother and how they told him he couldn't expect anything from her and so on. He pulled that whole story of him begging her for money when he didn't have enough money for my school supplies and her turning him down. I know this is a lie. My mother kept itemized records of all her money wires to my father every month since she had a job, meaning for over 15 years she has sent my father money. In the beginning, she sent him 400, then 600, then 1,000, and eventually 3,000. And he kept talking, saying how hard it was, that he wished he had gone after her more, but that the courts were not in his favor. He told me how even now I were barely able to go paycheck to paycheck. His rant was surreal. After he left to go God knows where, I went snooping through his room, where I found a stack of cash in his sock drawer. There was over 5k crammed in the back of his drawer. Things are getting worse. I feel so weird. I cannot describe the ick. I have all my documents and wrote my mother so we could maybe meet again. Should I just ghost my father? OP adds another update. They first talk about all the previous stuff that happened and they say some background. Until posting here, I never realized that my relationship with my father was not normal. I explained more about his behavior in the previous, but as a bit of an explanation, he made me his accountant from a very young age. I had to keep track of expenses, etc. And so many times I was having panic attacks because we would not make it to the end of the month the money on the account. So many times my father would berate me if I ever asked to go out, e.g. the cinema, because we couldn't afford it. When he would allow me to go out, it was always attached to an endless list of requirements that were absurd. Again, let's take the example of the cinema. I would ask him a week prior and he'd say yes, but that I had to clean the house, drive grandma to the doctor, pick up X, Y, leave some dinner ready for me, and many more. So that if I did not complete one single detail, like not bringing out the trash, he would pick up a fight with me, making me feel guilty and thus staying home. He would constantly make me feel worthless, saying I would not survive in uni, that I was not talented to do this, that I was not good enough to do that. He's extremely reactive. One time in the car, I teased him that I would be for the other football soccer team tonight and he kicked me out of the car, making me walk home. There are so many more examples. I thought it was merely my fault, or that other dads were also like this, but suffice to say, it is not normal. What happened now? I did in fact contact my mother after finding all this out. I confronted her with the newfound information. She admitted that it was quite bad and she did fear for her life. My father apparently had friends in law enforcement that were following my mother and making her life impossible, giving her tickets for the most inconsequential stuff, pulling her over for random controls everything possible to intimidate her or to find dirt on her. My father put us to the ultimatum of just signing over without a fight or he'd make her and my life impossible. My mother told me that he'd been abusing her since I was born, as early as one week postpartum. When my father uttered the ultimatum, she felt hopeless and just tried to end it. It did not work and after she was released, my father served her and battled for full custody. Because she was deemed unfit to parent, it was really easy for him. She told me the court actually went pretty hard on her. About a year after that, my mother attempted to establish visitation with me. She reached out to my father who invited her over. He told her that she could be in my life if she agreed to be together with him again. My mother told him no and then a fight ensued. That was the night he assaulted her. He assaulted her so badly that she wound up in the hospital. In the hospital seeing her wounds, they had to report it. So he was sentenced to a year but only served three months. At that time, custody of me was with my grandmother. My father resumed custody of me at that time of being released. I was able to corroborate all this after reaching out to my aunt, who has not spoken to our family in 10 years. My aunt Mia basically documented my mother's abuse. She took pictures of her bruises and recordings of my father screaming and threatening her. She told me that she testified against my father in court and that she could just back up everything my mother said because he was the same to her. I insisted on seeing the pictures and recordings. My aunt was resistant to this, but a part of me did not want to accept that this was reality. So yeah, my father is a fucking monster. I told my mother about everything monetarily that I had found out. She said that legally there was not much we could do. But she spoke with her lawyer and seeing as I am 18, she started the motion to start transferring me my child support money. She said that for the time being, she'd give me 1.5k monthly while she still had to pay my dad the money. As soon as the process is greenlit, I'm going to get it all. She also agreed to pay for my matriculation fees as well, 
as for the deposit and first month's rent of an apartment in my uni town so that I could be as independent as possible. But now I have only sent in my applications a couple of weeks ago, so I should get any news on that front latest by September. We decided that confronting my father was not a good idea for neither of us. So we decided on telling my father that my boyfriend's parents invited me to vacation, but he does not know I am gay. So we plan on telling him that this is the last vacation to say goodbye to my friend. I have talked to my boyfriend and his parents. He did not even hesitate and immediately said yes. They now know everything and support me 100%. So my mother and his parents are sending us for two weeks to a nearby country where they have a summer house. I told my father about the plans and he said that as long as his parents were paying that it was all right. He did tell me that I had to help him with a million things before leaving again. So I am already seeing a fight on the horizon. But I have managed to get all my important documents and open a bank account to my aunt's help. So on Thursday, I'm officially leaving for two weeks. I pray things to get resolved beforehand. I'm taking all my important stuff with me already in case things go south fast. Anyways, this has been an extremely difficult time and I feel overwhelmed with the all. So please don't reach out probing me for an update. I'll update when I feel it is right and when I feel like I can do it. This has been very helpful. Without you guys, I would never have noticed that I also have been abused and that there is most likely more to the story, even more than what I have found out. It has also proven very therapeutic to write this all down in a somewhat orderly fashion, so thank you so much for all the support and advice. OP started a new post first saying that they're not in the US, so US laws don't apply, and they said things went south fast. Wednesday night, the night before I left, my father picked up a fight with me for not taking his car for an oil change. He called me everything under the sun, saying I am selfish and a brat and that he raised me better. He then had my grandmother come and say how disappointed they were. I was clearly not mature enough to leave for a holiday, let alone move away for university. They held me awake till 4am under the guise of a family meeting, which was just basically a reprimanding session of all I had done wrong in my life. And to be honest, I was demoralized. I was ugly crying and feeling awful. Thankfully, my boyfriend called because I had not answered several texts of his. He helped me transport all my stuff while my father was sleeping and I left without telling him bye. He texted me around 1pm and my father was acting like everything was normal. So the two weeks passed very quickly. I got a mail that I got into a university that has a very good program for political science. So I accepted and put myself on the waiting list for university accommodation. Then shit blew up. My mother suddenly stopped giving my father half the money. So she was only paying what she was legally obligated to pay. My father was losing it. He began calling, screaming at me to come home at once. In calling me, crying to tell me that the bitch of my mother had reappeared and was suing him. And now we did not have enough money to pay for the mortgage. I called my mother to ask if she was actually suing him. She said no and she said she had just gone through the course to start paying me directly instead of my father, which was granted. Then my grandma started texting me. Then I had to come home right away because my father had a cardiac arrest. Obviously, I went back home with my boyfriend, only to find our house in literal shambles. There were beer cans, string liquor stuff, and cigarettes everywhere. Everyone that was betting that my father was using all the money on drugs and lavish stuff, hey, congratulations, you were right. Apparently, when I left, my father decided to have a huge party. He invited all these friends that he met in fancy bars. I know that because the lady that was in hospital with my dad, his girlfriend apparently, she did not know about me. She kept talking about our house as his summer residence. I asked her a few questions. She answered. She's actually pretty sweet, but put off by my father now that she knows how he lied. So apparently my father would take 3K and spend them almost fully on appearing to be richer. He bought some clothing pieces that were high quality. He would hang out in these fancy hotel sky lounges where he met his girlfriend. Then would take her and her friends out to expensive restaurants and clubs. She did not fully admit it, but insinuated that they did coke often and during those outings. Much like the party that leads my dad to OD, it was not only cocaine that they did, I also think amphetamines. Anyway, I thanked her and told her that the money was not my father's and she had been lied to. She stayed till my father came to and we could bring him home, which is when she dumped him. And then I broke it to him. I was leaving. He lost his shit. He punched me. He broke my nose. I was really afraid. He was not even fully recovered. In the hospital, I told the nurse how it happened and the police got involved. My mother took me in the very next day. She's helping me with all the legal things regarding my father. She helped me move out, helped me move cities. It all happened very, very fast. My boyfriend has been staying over because I am very afraid. 
My father has been blocked, but I've been getting threatening emails. So that is that. It is good and bad. So a lot of people were asking OP questions, so they got an FHQ on it, and they said, why did my mother not take me in if my father was so abusive? OP says, I explained it in the last post, but TLDR, she had lost her rights trying to commit suicide. It did not get better as my father and his friends in law enforcement and the judges in our small town are heavily biased against women. Next question says, how did you stumble upon so many documents so conveniently? OP says, I didn't. I sought out those documents. I reached out to Mia myself and insisted in her showing me what she had. None of this was per chance. I've sought out every single document. They are available to the public. Plus, if you know what you're looking for, you'll find them easily by going through your parents' files. This was not convenient. This was hard work. Someone says, if you're 18, why is your mum still paying child support? He said, here you are legally entitled to child support and governmental child support till you finish university or until you reach your 25th birthday. Someone says, are you going to sue your father for back payment? They say, no, that would not be of any help. It would be extremely hard to prove that he blew it all. In the end, I was fed and clothed and had a place to stay with heat, electricity and internet and running water. It would take too long and not be good for anything but revenge. My mother is terrified of him and I'm not keen on seeing him. We're going to pursue a restraining order and are documenting all his mails and contact attempts. Someone pointed out keeping an eye out for my father opening accounts or credits in my name. We're looking into protecting ourselves in that area. Someone says get a firearm. Opie says no, it's not legal nor makes any sense. Someone says how come your mother had a lawyer on retainer so conveniently? Opie says she didn't. My first post was well over a month ago. My mother reached out to a lawyer shortly after to transfer my child support from my father directly to me in a very clean cut way. Since then, that lawyer has recommended us to another firm that has taken my slash our case. Everything about our school and university. I'm not on the waiting list for what I'm going to study. I'm on a waiting list for the dorm. Till then, I'm staying with my boyfriend in a long-term Airbnb in the city. School starts in October, not next week. Again, I do not live in the US. Opie added one more post that says, I am finally free. My father died and I feel no sadness. My father died in the midst of our lawsuit. He had brutally attacked me because I was going to leave him and the child support check that he had been blowing on drugs and women would stop with my departure. Last year, my whole world crumbled when I found out that my mother had not left us. My father had abused her and made it impossible for her to take me. It made my life so absolutely miserable. I've detailed this over the past few months here. After I was let out of hospital, my mother and I got two amazing lawyers, one for the assault case and one for the misappropriation of the money. The process for the child support case was quick. He had to pay back 50% of the money given to him in the past three years to me directly. No further fines. However, the assault case spiraled. It was found out that he was going to attempt to plead not guilty in the case of temporary insanity. He detailed his plan to get away with this to his girlfriend, who was not an awful human and showed the police what she had. It went from assault to attempted murder. With his girlfriend leaving him, him owing a bunch of money, looking at a hefty prison sentence and no more money to bail himself out, he took his life on Friday. I was numb the whole week, but today the realization washed over me. I'm finally free. I don't have to look over my shoulder. I don't flinch when I hear steps. I don't have anxiety while checking my phone. I am free. I'm finally free. Oh my word, what an absolute roller coaster of a story op told us there and there was two comments below that jumped out because i was sort of just like gobsmacked after all that and i just looked at the comments raven said you have already handled more abuse than the majority of people will have in their entire lifetime and you've come out of it intact along the way you got an awesome boyfriend and reconnected with your mother that is something to be proud of live your life to the fullest and don't look back lala says now get some therapy and go and live You've had a lifetime of abuse. Hope you find joy. You certainly deserve it. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as always. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. Getting involved. Your love, support and time always means the absolute world to me. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.